Hello students, welcome back to my channel Mind Your Exam. So we will be continuing with the back exercise questions of chapter 5 of your NCRT computer science book for class 11th in this video as well. In the previous two videos we have solved questions from 1 to 7 and in this video we will take this exercise further. So starting with question number 8. Question number 8 asks you to categorize the following errors as syntax error, logical error or runtime error. The A part is 25 divided by 0. So, this there is no syntax error in this because the syntax or the rule, every rule of the Python language is completely followed here. There is no logical error because uh, the logic is completely true, completely correct here. And therefore, when you execute this program or this line of code, you will get a error at the runtime or at the execution time. Therefore, this particular part is a runtime error. Now, coming to the B part, the B part assigns num1 equal to 25 and num2 equal to 0 and then it performs num1 divided by num2. Now, do not get confused here whether we can write semicolons in the Python language and write all three statements in the same line or not. Yes, you can. So, that is not an error here, okay. It is not a syntax error. But the same thing is being performed uh, in B part also as it is being done in part A. So, division by zero error would arise when you run this particular program statement and that is why it is a runtime error. Now, coming to question number 9. In question number 9, you are given that a dartboard has a radius of 10 units and it is hanging on a wall with a that uses a 2D coordinate system. That means a two dimensional coordinate system is being used to measure the wall and the dartboard which has the radius of 10 units. The center of the board lies at the point 0, 0. Now if variables x and y store the x and y coordinate of the dart respectively whenever the dart hits the board we have to write a python expression using x and y variables that will evaluate to true if the dart is within the dart board and then evaluate the expression for those dart coordinates. Okay, so uh, just quickly explaining the question. The question basically says that you have a dart board, it has a radius of 10 units and it has a center at point 0, 0. Now you have to find out that when a dart is hit towards the dart board, you will be given the coordinates where the dart lands. Okay, you will given the co you will give you will be given or you will be provided with the x and y coordinate in the two dimensional uh, coordinate system. Now you have to find out whether that position will lie within the dart board, within the radius of the dart board, or that dart will land somewhere outside the dart board. Okay, so first you have to write a Python expression that will give the result as true whenever the dart lands within the uh, radius of the dartboard otherwise the expression should evaluate to false and the second part of the question asks you to find out using the four coordinates in the four parts whether the dart will actually land into the dartboard within the dartboard or not <clears throat> okay so the logic behind this question is to find out whether the dart lands within the radius of the dartboard you need to find the distance between two points the center of the board that means point 0 comma 0 and the point where the dart lands okay so the distance between these two points can be found out using the formula square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square where x2 comma y2 are the coordinates of the dart on the da where the dart lands and uh, x1 comma y1 is representing the center of the dart board which is 0 comma 0. So our uh, formula for distance comes down to x2 square plus y2 square and we have to see if this distance is either less than or equal to 10 that means if the distance between the center of the uh, dart board or the dashboard uh, I think it should be that board okay so the send if the distance between the center and the point where the uh, dart lands is less than equal to 10 then this particular expression would evaluate to true and if it is not then it would evaluate to false so now we'll write the 
code for this particular situation. When we write the code, we'll first accept, we'll have to take the input from the user for what are the x and y coordinates of the dart where it has landed. Okay, so using the input statement, you take the x coordinate of the dart, then you take the y coordinate where the dart has hit the dashboard or where the dart has hit on the 2D system. You convert these values into an integer. We are assuming that there are no floating point numbers here. If it has been specified in the question, you can convert these values from string to float. Okay. Now, once we have the x and y coordinate, we need to find out the distance as we have just used, shown you in the formula. The distance would be calculated by x exponentiation operator 2, that means x raised to the power 2 plus y exponentiation operator 2 and whole of this summation value, that means x square plus y square would be raised to the value half, that means 0 0.5. So, the entire summation would be uh, exponentiated with the value 0 0.5. So, this will give you under root x square plus y square, that means the distance between the center and the dart. Now, if this distance is less than equal to 10, then true would be printed, otherwise false would be printed. So, evaluating different coordinates, if the coordinate where the dart lands is 0, 0, then the distance, if you find out using the distance formula, the distance would be 0 because 0 square is 0 and 0 is less than 10. Therefore, this particular position would be within the dartboard. If the dart lands at 10, 10 and you find out the distance, you will find that the distance comes out to be 2 under root 200 and this value would be greater than 14. That means this value would lie, the distance is greater than the radius of the dartboard. Therefore, the uh, program will output the value as false. In the C case, when the dart lands on the coordinate 6, 6, you will find the distance to be under root 72. And since under root 72 is less than value the radius 10, it, the result would be true. And similarly, evaluating the next part 7, 8, finding the distance, you will find that this particular distance would be greater than 10 and the program that you have just written would evaluate to false. Coming to the next question. The next question says that you have to write a Python program that converts the temperature in degree Celsius to the temperature in degree Fahrenheit. And once you have written the program, you have to convert two temperatures. That means the boiling point of water and the freezing point of water, which is 100 degree Celsius and 0 degree Celsius respectively, into Fahrenheit temperatures using that program. The question also provides you with the formula of converting the Fahrenheit values into, uh, sorry, the for converting the Celsius values into the Fahrenheit values. So, what you will do, again, you will first accept or take the user input, ask the user what kind of temperature or what value of temperature he wants to convert from degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So, you take the input, convert it into a floating point value because the temperature can be in floating numbers also. You can use int also, but uh, more logically, more logical would be to use a floating conversion here. Okay. So, take the input, store it in a variable. I have named the variable temp underscore cell or Celsius. Now, to convert this into Fahrenheit temperature, I have applied the formula. That means the Celsius temperature would be multiplied by 9 divided by 5, put it in uh, parenthesis because this division has to be performed first, then the result of this division would be multiplied with the temperature and then 32 should be added. So, when you print temperature underscore Fahrenheit, you would get the temperature in Fahrenheit. Now, when you input the value 100, that means the boiling point of water, the output for the program is would be 212 and when you input the value 0, the output for the program would be 32. Coming to question number 11, the question number 11 asks you to find out the amount and the simple interest when P denotes the principal amount, 
R denotes the rate of interest and T denotes the time in years. So basically you have to find out the amount, right? You have to write a program that finds out the amount that is payable uh, after a certain duration when a certain rate of interest is applied on some principal amount. So the, um, the formula for simple interest is given to you P into R into T divided by 100 and the formula for amount payable is also given principal plus SI. So what you will do again you need to accept since it is given in the question that principal rate of interest and time would be taken as input from the user. So you have to first write the three input statements that would accept the, these three values. Again, I have converted into floating data type here. So uh, because time can also be in float, rate of interest and principal amount can also be in float. Okay. So once you have got these values, you have stored in uh, the respective variables, you find out the simple interest. Simple interest would be given by the expression P multiplied by R multiplied by T and this whole expression would then be divided by 100. So that is why I have put the parenthesis here. Now calculating the amount payable, you will uh, put A or any variable that denotes the amount equal to principal plus SI and you would print that uh, result. Amount payable is A, that the result, the amount that we have calculated. Okay. Coming to question number 12. Question number 12 says that three people A, B and C individually take X days, Y days and Z days to complete a job when they work individually. Okay. Now you have to find that how many days would be taken to complete the same job when all the three are working together. The question also gives you the formula to compute the same. So the formula is X, Y, Z divided by xy plus yz plus xz. So again it is very similar to the previous questions. First you need to accept those values that you will be using in the computation. So the three values here are the number of days taken by A to complete the work individually which is denoted or stored in the variable x. Then in variable y I am storing the number of days taken by B and in z I am storing number of days taken by C. So to calculate the combined time, I apply the formula on the uh, values that I have just taken from the user. That means on x, y and z and the formula would be x multiplied by y multiplied by z in parenthesis because I want this expression to be evaluated first and then I divide it with the second expression which is x multiplied by y plus y multiplied by z plus x multiplied by z. Now I print this particular value that is the combined time that I have just calculated. Alright, now question number 13. Question number 13 asks you to take the, you uh, ask two integers from the user or take the user input as two integer and then perform all the arithmetic operations on them. So what are the arithmetic operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulo operation and flow division. So store the two integer values by taking the input from the user in two different variables. I have taken the variables num1 and num2 here and then I have used six different statements to uh, print the result of each of the arithmetic operation that can be performed on these two numbers. So addition would be num1 plus num2. Subtraction would be num1 minus num2, num1 multiplied by num2, divide, divided, num1 divided by num2, modulo, num1 modulo num2 and at the end num1 floor division num2. Okay. Coming to the next question, we have to write a program to swap two numbers using a third variable. Now this is a little interesting and it is related to the next question in which you are asked to swap two numbers without using a third variable. So first we will solve it using the third variable. So again first step of solving this program or writing this program would be to take input from the user and accept two numbers that you want to store in two variables and then you will be 
swapping the values of those two variables. So in the first step, I accept the two numbers in the variables num1 and num2. Then I use a third variable named temp. I assign the value of num1 in temp. Why I am doing this? So that this value is stored in this variable temp and when I replace the original value of num1 with the value that was stored in num2, then in that case the original value of num1 will not be lost because we have already stored it in temp. So if you directly do num1 equal to num2 without storing the original value of num1 then you will not be able to assign the original value of num1 to num2 okay so because now num1 would be storing the newer value which is the value of num2 so what are the three steps of swapping the numbers using a third variable assign the value of one of the two variables in a third variable then the value of the variable that you have now stored replace that variable's value with the value of the second variable that means num2 and now in the second variable store the value that had that you had stored in the first step that means in the third variable okay so this is the way you will perform swapping of two numbers using a third variable then you can print the result now in the next question you have to do the same function but you do not have to use a third variable for the same so uh, one of the ways of doing this is using multiple assignment uh, statement now in multiple assignment statement after you accept the values of num1 and num2 and these two variables have their respective values stored what you would do on the left hand side you would write num1 comma num2 equal to num2 comma num1 now if you think about it how would actually this program work because uh, we have just seen that we need to store the value of the variable uh, whose value we are replacing with the second variable so in this case the logic behind it or how it is actually executed by the python interpreter is that first the right hand side would be evaluated that means the right hand side which is currently the original value of num2 comma num1 the python interpreter would create uh, copies of these values and store with itself and then it will perform the assignment operation and it will perform the assignment of value num2 that it has just stored it will assign it to num1 and then it will assign the value of num1 to the variable num2 okay so that is why this particular expression works in this case we do not need a third variable python itself performs the task of storing the values of the variable before replacing or swapping them okay so this was all for today's lecture we'll see all the remaining questions in the next video so stay tuned to our channel let us know how did you like this way of uh, seeing the videos with using the handwritten notes so thank you for watching stay tuned to our channel till we meet next mind your exam